and we are recording. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> We're, we have gathered here, me and Nux, to discuss uh, all the things uh, to do with Seeker in in our <laughs> uh, in our first video we sort of faffed about uh, everything that has to do with the creative process that we're currently uh, in that deep is in. deep in that mm. is finalizing finalizing two end chapters for the upcoming uh, story called Seeker and also a round of proofreading and uh, and uh, last minute uh, plot hole weeding the touch ups yeah the touch ups we're doing some touch ups and uh, the plan for this video if i understand correctly is to do some character portraits basically yeah some prof profiling of some of the characters within the book specifically in this instance our protagonist miss harper jewel harper yep and in your in your notes uh, i noticed that you had set, you had uh, wrote written down nickname jewel harper but that's not correct it's more like code name that's her job name yeah that's what she goes by in her day job seeker valkyrie is the uh nickname slash well not nickname but her that is her her seeker code name is valkyrie so and then jewel harper is the is her actual name which nobody knows yeah not a lot of, well that is a couple a of <laughs> yeah that is, that is that is a plot point actually that yeah. uh, that will become that will be important later anyway so what is a seeker well, a seeker is a bounty hunter, uh, a specialist sort of bounty hunter. Um, although they're fall, they seem to be falling out of favour in recent days. Ooh. Um, but yeah, Jewel is a bounty hunter, and it's her job to take the contracts that the seekers get, especially in her sector. Her sector would be the Rice Star sector. There's a ah, uh, two details. Oh. Okay, too much detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's not that's not important now. Who are seekers? Uh, okay, so the seekers get jobs, and it's up to them to go and and find these people and bring them back and ensure that they face judgment or punishment or whatever it is that they're facing. So, yeah, it's up to people like Jewel to go and find these people and either retrieve them or if they put up too much of a fight. Mm, Sometimes it can go a bit south, but <laughs> yeah, so basically, basically mm. they are glorified thugs. Yep. Uh, they, they are a force of enforcement. Mm -hmm. We could say they are an enforcement company, enforcement yeah. and, and bounty hunting company. And uh, now it's my turn to go on a bit of world building tangent. Uh, I would say that the way the story has evolved. It's sort of starting to uh, starting to show that uh, keeping order and or enforcing somebody's interests is pretty much a private business. Mm -hmm. like you, you have you have different agencies, you have different uh, companies, but uh, there isn't necessarily too much too much of a sort of central police force. No. So they are enforcers. Mm -hmm. And they're not they're not <laughs> to 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 spin a cliche, there's no good or bad. Like as long as the money's good for the seekers, they tend to, you know Do the job. They don't have any qualms about, you know. Yeah, they they're there to do the job. Mm -hmm. And our protagonist is about to find out the ugly side of that. Oh yes. <laughs> so how in how yeah. in depth do we want to go with this? Because I mean, Jewel is in in the grand scale of things, she's a sort of relatively new seeker. Yeah, I, mean, I think let's uh, let's maybe double a little bit about what we what we have discussed behind the scene 
about uh, how the how the seeker company or seekers organization functions like they get recruits mhm mm there is a selection process not everybody gets in so it's 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 still a little bit uh a little bit prestigious sort of like if they are glorified thugs then they are highly glorified thugs <laughs> <laughs> yes because there there are there are many enforcement companies but theirs is one of the more prestigious ones mm. uh I remember we also discussed about uh, how many missions someone would have. Uh, I, I think the discussion started from how many missions would Jewel, Jewel have under her belt. Mm. And uh, the idea was that not all of the missions would be solo missions. No, yeah, that was that was one of the main things is that it, it, she did it, she did missions and runs with um others and then there was a point where they were like okay you're ready to to go it alone now mm. yeah, and that so that was a big moment for her yeah so i remember the uh the idea there was that um the recruits are are trained and then they are taken along taken along to missions with a senior group kind kind of my comparison there was kind of the way uh, how in XCOM 2, no, just XCOM, how in XCOM you take a few rookies on a mission so that they could get the XP to advance. Yeah. So in the beginning, your squad is mostly made up of veterans and you add a few rookies. And if you have a critical mass of experienced rookies, then you can already send them out on a simpler mission on their own ish. With maybe yeah. one, one or two supervisors, and then uh, later on, when they have already trained up and uh, and uh, gone for a qualification process and maybe even specialized, then uh, you would you would get your solo missions, yeah. and 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 also there were some uh, some silent assumptions there that if you were good enough to qualify for solo missions you also had to have enough resources to uh, to get your own uh, vessel yeah which is required you have you have to each uh, uh, each of these uh, bounty hunters the ones who do solo missions they uh, they they have their own vessel which takes them around the local space and uh and once they take uh once they take a contract to complete a bounty they they can do it on their own or they can team up with somebody else but basically it's it's on them from that point on yeah that about sums it up <laughs> yeah if you if we want to go into further detail about the specifics jewel has got her own shuttle yeah, that that was one of the main things. Like Jewel has got her own shuttle, but because of her upbringing, and this this speaks more back to her character creation and her backstory a little bit. But thanks to her upbringing, she tends to be more f not frugal. Um, she's intelligent with money. Let's say she's, yeah. she's minimalist. Quite in yeah, and to this end, instead of having a shuttle with all like luxuries and all this sort of thing, it is the bare minimum. She's got a couple of pods in there that she can use and that her captive her bounty can use and that's about it and she mm -hmm. saves herself a lot of money that way mm -hmm. um, whereas other seekers they tend they sometimes do things a bit more elaborately let's say <laughs> they maybe choose vessels that m bit more than they potentially need but yeah uh, Jewel is quite minimalist mm -hmm. in that regard and I think let's keep this uh, episode uh, centralized or, or let's keep the focus on Seekers as organization. So mm -hmm. the, uh, the specific group that, uh, that is covered in the story Seeker is uh, basically, they, they are based in one location. Uh, we're, we're calling it the Rise Star Hub. Uh, mm -hmm. So their their main base is uh, is within uh, a space station. That's where their training grounds are, their safe houses, their 
uh, all the infrastructure uh, and uh, besides the active agents or the active bounty hunters you also have the senior staff who coordinates everything who might uh, pull a few strings every now and again uh, who mentor the younglings and mm. also you have a whole lot of uh, supporting crew who main vessel maintenance port maintenance uh, sort of launch uh, control uh, that sort of yeah, stuff launch control um lesser enforcement like for example yeah. when uh, we have a scene where when jewel comes in with her bounty then the local team will gather the uh captive and uh, and take him away so there's uh, there there's all sorts of not not everybody in the hub is a uh, full agent no. there's there's lots of jobs there Anything? Anything to add? I don't think so. I think I think we've pretty much covered it. We've the the seekers are a bounty hunting organization. Uh, the the main focus of our story uh, for the seekers is at the Rice Star Hub, and then we follow Jewel directly from that location. Mm. Uh, and I mean, glor glorified thugs is <laughs> is basically a really good way of putting it. There's there's an I think I think within the seekers there's an element of oh we're we're cool we're we're doing a we're a helpful company in the universe but actually the people who have encountered them don't see them like that at all. <laughs> all right. Yeah, let's let's just say our brave protagonist might have some illusions regarding that. Yeah. So However, saying that the badge does get you into a few places that otherwise it might not have done. But it seems as though those rewards or those, um, what's the word? Those benefits, mm -hmm. they the, the seekers aren't doing a good enough job to hold on to those benefits mm -hmm. right now. So yeah, let's say your mileage mileage may vary. Yeah. And uh, also, the background assumption in universe is that. Uh, this particular hub where our brave protagonist resides this is not the only seeker hub there are others in other locations but we are not uh, directly uh, monitoring them yeah. so we don't know what's happening there from uh, uh, this might be speculation but from what I've read of the the information regarding the seekers in Rystar th the seekers seem to be very self-governing mm -hmm. organizations like there there is no overarching like we're the big boss seekers you know like it's just <laughs> factions in like there'd be one in Arabia space mm -hmm. and one in Europe space and they just get on with the job of seekering you know like there's no overarching government thing going on there well, I would think that uh, as far as specifically seeker organization goes, there is some sort of uh, higher council or higher body that the uh, Reister Hub responds to. Mm. However, that uh, that governing body itself, it's 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 a thing of itself. It it, it is not. Uh, Answering to any uh, any major civilization or or anything like that, so yeah. I, I wouldn't make any claims about the locations or any of that. But we are assuming that the uh, Reister Hub is one of several or one of many, mm -hmm. and there there might be. I I would I would even speculate that there might be some sort of uh, regional boundaries. Because seekers are not the only uh, bounty hunting organization. No. <laughs> so, so basically, this this is this is their turf. Is yeah. What we're saying. Yeah. Right then, I think uh, I think uh, before we start uh, talking about Jewel herself more specifically, I'm gonna stop recording, and let's make mm -hmm. a, let's make a whole new episode out of it. Then mm -hmm. they then they will remain like nice bite size and such. Yeah. Thanks for watching! Yes, thank you. So this has been a brief overview with speculations about uh, the organization of Seekers who make up the uh, sizable background force in the, uh, in the story that is itself called Seeker.
Mm -hmm. See you in the next one.